Hello and good day to you. My name is Nate. This is Limping Through Models with Nate and this is part four of the chicken salad challenge with the tornado flat ride. There's a lot to cover. There's a lot to debrief about. So with all that in mind, let's get started. All of my buckets have a healthy dose of gloss clear coat applied ready for the check beads. I gather all the beads closest to the colors of the buckets and start to prepare to lay these beads. I started to go at this like I did the light panels, however I forgot that was not how I laid these beads out in my first bucket. I instead applied the clear cement to the recessed portion of the bucket and dropped the beads in one by one. For the most part, the spacing of the beads in the channel ranged from just right to I may need to fudge some of the space to make it work. The finished result looks quite yummy. What we have here is the proof of concept for the bucket attachment to the gondola using tiny ball bearings as opposed to the pinholes that come with the kit. I now get to propagate this customization. To enlarge the pinholes, I use two precision files. The first is a circular file that is used to bore out a larger hole than the existing pinhole. Then I use an oblong file to bore the hole until it's just large enough to snugly set the ball bearing without glue. I test fit the ball bearing a couple times until the hole is just right. I initially used some needle nose pliers to pinch the bearings in place which seemed to work at first but was not completely level with the platform. I opted to use a square sandwich with pliers hammers to ensure a snug and level fit for the other 10 spots. Now all the bearings are in place, ready to take on some buckets. I had to be the bad guy here and destroy these things that my son came to know as mushrooms. The buckets had been attached to these sticks for weeks with hobby putty and there was plenty of residue left over. Remember this rule of thumb. Fight putty with putty. Just keep sopping up the putty with whatever you have left over and it will eventually come out and give you a clean finish. Some beads were lost in my manhandling so I attached those back before continuing. These pins are used to attach the buckets to the gondola. They would normally sit in the pinhole and the bucket would spin, note the unseen air quotes, around the pin freely. These instead get shaved down on one side and forced through the hole in the bucket and secure it in the middle of the ball bearing without glue. I am happy to say that for all the spinning parts, I did not have to use glue once. And after some twisting and turning, I was able to get most of the buckets to spin as freely as my first bucket. I am really excited to see the progress of these buckets so far. I brush out one last coat of black on the inside of the buckets before covering them with their tops. I gather all the bucket tops that I have, which at the moment seems to be 11 so I'm having a little bit of a freak out moment about that, but I press on thinking it will show up at some point. Instead of my typical plastic cement, I use tacky glue to attach the top of the buckets. Thankfully, I found the missing top and quickly moved to attach it before it disappears again. Spots where I shave off a little too much of the channel are filled in with beads as needed. I now have what I consider to be a close to finished gondola. Much better than that yellow-blue combo you get out of the box. Going back to the graphics I scanned into my computer, I print out the tornado sign to a size I thought would be appropriate for the model. I don't really care how the printed sign looks, I really only need it as a guide to cut out my styrene pieces. I had started to use an X-Acto knife like a good little modeler, however I found a pair of scissors was much easier to use and uh, cut the uh, cutting time down dramatically. Once I got my sign just right, I moved to cut out the individual letters for the sign. Using a rather dried out glue stick, a head lying around, I slathered what I could onto the styrene placed all the letters in a postmodern art pattern, cut around the groups of letters, and left them to dry to cut out later. I went online and found some HO scale diamond plate, oops, uh, give me a second here to fix this.
Anyway, I found some HO scale diamond plating that I intend to use on some of the spicy embellishments of my chicken salad model. The first of which are the catwalk platforms along the backboards. There are some weird angles happening here and I decided to eyeball most of those cuts. However, I did at least measure the length and width. I figured that if I get one half of the platforms cut, then I could use those pieces as templates for the other side. It worked well for the most part, but I did need to do some sanding to get the plates just right. Using clamps I had lying around, I squared up one end of the platform stack and sanded down the other uneven end while in the vise. All my tornado letters are now dry, and at this point I remove all pretense and cut right to- Dang it! Another pun! <sighs> cut right to using scissors. I did use an X-Acto knife for the A, D, and O, of course. Ain't no way I'm getting scissors in those tiny holes. No going yet, as I still have to paint these sign pieces. Look, I'm gonna level with you. I'm not even gonna write this out. I'm gonna tell you right now, I absolutely suck at soldering. Period. Full stop. Any pretense that I may lead in, that, that I know a thing or two about soldering, it's, it's not even there. But what you're about to see is a very poor attempt at doing this very <laughs> simple thing now that I've looked more into it. And um, yeah, don't use this as a basis for any sort of soldering tutorial. I am truly limping through soldering. <laughs> but hey, look on the bright side. I have a motor now. I'm one step closer to motorizing this entire model. Once I get it fitted appropriately in the housing that comes in the kit. Now, here's the cringe part right here. Here it comes. By God, I am so sorry that you have to see this. I'm sure there are dozens of you that are screaming at me right now at this method here. I assure you, I have learned from my mistakes. I, I have... I have broaden my horizons as it pertains to soldering. I broke the wire for God's sake, but I was able to find a way to get that wire back into the motor in a place where it could connect and was able to salvage this poor wiring soldering technique that you're seeing right now. So I get the housing sanded down just right and I'm attaching it to everything and I had to look at the instructions again and I realized that I actually had the motor upside down. The little spindle is supposed to be facing towards the bottom uh, of, the, of the base as opposed to the top because the, the pulleys actually start from the bottom and work their way up through to the main gondola and where everything spins uh, as it should. So I got that fixed up, I got the wires fed through the, the holes here, trying to get them into the base in, in some way, and I do a little test fit of the actual gondola, and it was hitting on the motor as it was spinning. And the first thing I tried was to move the motor, which worked, but then I realized that there was an additional spacer that needs to be put on the underside of that main gondola, which helped to uh, add some more space, uh, more clearance between the gondola and the motor. The last part of today's build is the start of the ticket booth build. I noticed in the pictures of the ride that the ticket booth kind of sits on a platform built into the front of the steps. However, the booth was not a part of the steps. So using an X-Acto knife and a Dremel, I take about an hour to cut out a single section of steps for this platform to sit into. While I had the Dremel in hand, I cut out some divots for the motor wires to feed out as well. I take a couple jabs at cutting out the platform using the diamond plated styrene sheet I have. I start with a small platform that just did not look right. I wanted something that would meld into the existing base and look like it belongs. I then trace out the entire bottom of the stairs on the styrene sheet hoping to use that in some way. Instead, I used what I cut out of the sheet and not what I cut into it. 
The idea would be to cut the same angles into the middle of the sheet and have the sides droop down like a Q-ramp. I was going to make this all one piece, but most Carnival Ride diamond plated metal sheets are split into separate sheets manageable by a single person or persons. Therefore I cut only a base that will be completely flat and leave the other pieces to be added later as the Q-ramps. I add some styrene bracing to make the platform truly flat and to allow it to sit on top of the bottom step. Additional diamond plate styrene is used to create the coverings for the back wall of the platform and sides to completely close up the platform. Like I said earlier, I was truly limping through soldering when trying to solder these uh, wires together. And I realized just how much or how little I knew about soldering. I mean, I didn't have any idea about uh, tinning or oxidation or, or soldering for that matter. So after the fact, I went online, I watched a whole bunch of videos, I got all the information I needed. So now the next time I solder, I have a nice tinned tip ready to go. I got one of these, uh, these brass cleaner di uh, deals here where you clean your, your tip. And I got some tip tinner here so we can keep the tip nice and uh, tinned. We're not in use and I'll be very mindful about the oxidation of the metal because when it's oxidized, it does not conduct as much heat as it should. And uh, yeah, so I pretty much know a lot more than, about soldering than I did before. And hopefully the next time when I do this, which will be probably a long time from now, uh, I won't have to struggle with trying to get the, uh, the solder to actually get on the wire. So. I got that going for me. We'll see what happens. So another thing about uh, the model here. So I told you that I wanted to have some sort of way to power this, to modulate the speed so it doesn't go too fast, so I can control how fast it goes, all that good stuff. And I was trying to find all sorts of different things to use to make that happen. However, the answer the entire time was in the instructions. So IHC has a power source called Black Beauty, bam -ba -lam, that modulates speed and that this can be powered by. It was actually suggested in the instructions to use this for the motor that we have here. So I have the little Black Beauty module. It has a nice little knob to modulate the speed. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like. So let me just plug up or get the wires in here for the, the motor. Now, uh, one little mishap I did have when I was testing this out is that the little hook that hooks this, uh, these buckets upright when you're spinning the, the, the model, it uh, snapped off. So I'll have to be the, the angling of the, the buckets and we'll see what it looks like. So here it goes. It's a little tough. It's, a, it's an old uh, box, so. Okay. Come on. Hit it. <laughs> and you go really fast. Whoa! Slow it down just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit. There we go. So there you have it. I have a spinning tornado ride. It'd be kind of weak if it was a tornado that wouldn't spin, because then it would cease to be a tornado. But here it is, in all of its glory, spinning ever so wonderfully. And no smoke from the uh, motor either. Found that out the hard way when I put this into the accessory port and it went to, uh, and I went to make it happen and uh, it started smoking. So there's, you gotta watch out for that. Anyway, I got it motorized, I'm ready to go. Next video, there's gonna be a lot of um, detail stuff that's gonna happen here. Probably gonna finish up the ticket booth and there's other sorts of things to, to put around the uh, the gondola for for safety of the people 
So until then, like, comment, subscribe, do everything you have to do to get to the next video. Maybe the last video, I don't know, but I'm going to see what I can get uh, thrown in there. So until then, see you next time.